This is a Fairmount motor car or track car or speeder. Um, it's constructed of all steel with a wood deck. This is wood on the side here and on the top. It's bolted down, it does not lift off. This was uh, converted to electric. I believe at one time it was gasoline powered. Um, what I'd like to do is finish the project uh, to all electric. It looks like it ran on a 12 volt battery, but I'd like to make it 24 volt. And I would like to make this seat area come off so you could get into the batteries. The current control, some of the things are missing. It had a high-low beam switch, forward and reverse. I'm not sure what this was. This is marked horn, and I take it this might have been the throttle uh, for speed control. I'm not really sure. The uh, front of it, it's kind of interesting. There is a radiator right here, and then it says Fairmont. This is made out of wood. And then this is actually a radiator from someplace, and they put this together. It's brass. This just lifts off, and you can set it down. There's like a bracket on the back here that goes on this lip. They had clips here for the batteries, which sat inside. Nice big headlight. It was uh, chain driven. I'll take the top off a little bit later. But this is the chain, and then here's the gears, right here. It has nice spoked wheels, which is kind of neat. There's the rear. And this would hold uh, two people probably max, uh, or one person obviously comfortably. On the back is a tail light <laughs> that they've rigged up. Um, so I'm assuming that maybe one of those switches was for the tail light. I, I don't know. Um, but again, uh, it's fairly good shape when I found it. Uh, it was in two pieces. Um, I'll take the uh, top off of this so we can take a look at the frame. And just give you a shot back here. Okay, we've got the top taken off and now we're looking at the frame. Again, uh, really nice spoked wheels. It'd be nice to save those and uh, rig something up, but what I'm going to do is use a Plum cro uh, Cove uh, motor base off of one of the box cab electrics. I have one over here and I'm going to place it next to this so you can get an idea of the size. They had rigged up this <laughs> outlet plug to plug into the top part where the controls were work the controls for the motors. The track car came with six of these motors. It doesn't look like they were used. The frame, you can see the original hole arrangement. This motor does not mount there, so what they did, they notched it so that this motor will fit in to the notches. And you can see over here, then they could mount it then you'd have to put a gear on it and then right below is where the chain would be for the chain drive and both axles are chain driven there's the other front axle so they both were chain driven and again there's six motors that came with it and then I do have these gears which are way too big for this shaft and it's too big for for in here so I don't know if these were intended for this project or not but I have them <laughs> Okay, we are looking at the track car frame in the back, the speeder frame in the back, and in the front is a Plum Cove box cab frame with motors. Um, there's another video that I have uh, showing this uh, all together and then taking it, taking it apart. I actually have two of these, um, and this one appears not to have been used at all. It's one of the earlier models. They've made improvements over the years with some of the electronics um, but it's a great design and it's a great uh, starting point for if you need some sort of a drive train drive system uh, this this will work really great again you have the motor right down here wheel level 
you have a gear driven and then you have your wheels and then it's in a sprung box and this is like a uh, U-channel that the frame is made out of and then flat bar on the ends so the plan is this spacing is 11 inches from wheel to wheel center of wheel to wheel the axles on here it's 22 inches and my radius on the track is going to be about 30 foot radius so this to me might be a little wide so I'm going to basically split the difference instead of 22 inches in between axles I'll do probably 16 inches and then this will obviously sit lower um, on on this frame but that that's okay I think it'll I think it'll be alright and then again you have this piece here that raises up and this is where the floor was for the box cab so basically this is kinda of like the floor here this can be lowered this can be raised so you know the final product the track car will be a little bit lower than the original but a little bit higher than the frame here for the box cab so that's the plan and when we start the process I'll take another video to show uh, the progress